a great number of Turks came to the walls. This happened at about the second hour of the night, and the skirmish lasted until about the sixth hour of the night, and many Turks died in the fighting. Our men were not expecting their attack, and I cannot describe the cries with which they came at the walls and the sound of castanets, so that there seemed to be even more Turks than really were there, and the sound carried as far as Anatolia, 12 miles away from their camp. The Emperor began to mourn, because we, Christians, were not ready to withstand a general attack. Niccolo Barbaro, May 1453The glory days of the Byzantine Empire were long gone, and the former Roman Empire was restrained to this well-defensed city. The Ottomans had conquered the whole area around, but they were also having a rather unfortunate time. The young Sultan Mehmed II knew that in order to keep his empire alive, he had only one chance – to conquer Constantinople, the symbol of Christianity. The Sultan prepared the attack wisely beginning with the isolation of the city on land and on sea. The Byzantine Emperor Constantine XI Paleologos asked the other European countries for help, but no one hurried to support him. This was mainly due to the ongoing European conflicts and to the rivalry between the Orthodox and the Catholic Church. The few Venetians and Genovese who joined the Byzantines raised the number of the defending soldiers to 7,000 very few compared to the 100,000 Ottomans. The troops promised by the Hungarian king have never arrived, and more than that, the Hungarian engineer Orban sold his fantastic invention, the biggest cannon ever seen, to the Ottomans. The gigantic cannon was able to shoot a 500 kg cannonball at a distance of 2 km. The siege of Constantinople was in fact history's first great artillery barrage. The town was well fortified on its western side and surrounded by sea on the other three sides. At the entrance to the Golden Horn a large chain was pulled across to prevent Turkish ships from entering. The walls destroyed by the Turkish cannons during daytime were rebuilt at night by the Byzantines. The resources of the city were running low, but the Ottoman soldiers also began to lose their patience. Mehmed was constrained to promise his soldiers that they will be allowed to plunder the city. The fate of the war was decided by a brilliant naval maneuver. The Sultan decided for towing his ships across Galata over greased logs and into the estuary, eventually attacking the weaker walls on this side. Tuesday, May 29th. 1453. The Ottomans finally breached Constantinople's wall, entering the city. Emperor Constantine himself died fighting on the streets. The plunder and destruction lasted for three days, as the Sultan promised. Still, some historians believe that in 1453 the Turks treated the defeated with more humanity than the Crusaders who conquered Constantinople in 1204. Today we will be answering the question if it's worth it to visit Istanbul just for a few hours between two flights, for example. Well, as a matter of fact, I want to visit the Golden Horn and Alexandra would rather sleep in the hotel, but okay, let's see at the end of the day what is the conclusion. Istanbul was founded on seven hills, just like Rome. It is the only city in the world which is both on two continents. But how often are you able in your life to go with a taxi from one continent to another? It was Earth's largest city in 1502. Today it's the 15th, with a population of exactly 15 million. Istanbul was the capital city of three major empires. 
Eastern Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire and Ottoman Empire. It has the third oldest subway in the world, built in 1875. During the Middle Ages there were over 1400 public toilets in the city, meanwhile there weren't any in other European cities. Ai văzut de unde sunt castanele pe stradă de la noi și porumbul fiert? Mm-hmm. Ok, deci îți place, da. Mm-hmm. At the time the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II uh, entered the city with his troops, a lot of Byzantines committed suicide for not to fall alive in the hand of the Turks. But some of the Byzantines thought about finding refuge in Hagia Sophia. But The historians say the Ottomans killed them all. A legend says that the patriarch who was supposed to have been praying when the Turks broke in slipped out through a side door and one day it is expected that he'll return when the building becomes a church again and will finish his prayers. The first church was built on this place by Constantine the Great in 325 AD, but was rebuilt by Theodosius II in 415 and eventually got today's shape in 537, during the time of Emperor Justinian I. It was, at that time, the world's largest building. Nicknamed as the eighth wonder of late ancient world, the Hagia Sophia was for 960 years the religious center of the Eastern Roman Empire. After the Turks took the city, it served as a mosque for 482 years. In 1935, the founder of the Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, transformed the building into a museum. And if you're wondering how those Byzantine uh, religious paintings uh, survived the Muslim era, Well, the Ottomans, when they conquered Constantinople, they simply uh, painted every... They covered with paint uh, all the saints. And when uh, Hagia Sophia became a museum at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, all this uh, paint, all that paint was uh, erased and the Byzantine paintings were revealed. Here there's also the tomb of uh, Enrico Dandolo, and if you are a Dan Brown fan, you know what I'm saying. Enrico Dandolo was the only person ever to be buried in Hagia Sophia. He was the Venetian dodge which unexpectedly conquered and looted Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade in 1204. After taking the city, Mehmed II ordered not to destroy the old monuments. His intention was to have a shining and cosmopolite capital. It's strange to see on the wall of the mosque um, painted uh, the saint, Christian saint. So. So let's eat some walnuts. Yeah. The lady is pushing forward, so we have been waiting, but she came, bought before us. Yeah, manners. Next to Hagia Sophia sits the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, better known as the Blue Mosque. It was built in 1616 at Sultan Ahmed's order. Blue tiles decorate the interior walls and therefore the mosque is bathed in blue light.
are passing by the ancient hippodrome and walking on narrow streets towards the Grand Bazaar. How do you feel in the uh, in the grandfather of the shopping malls, the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul? I need more time. <laughs> <laughs> The Grand Bazaar was built by the Sultan Mehmed right after conquering the city. It's one of the largest and oldest covered markets in the world, with 61 covered streets and over 4,000 shops. In 2014 it was listed number one among the world's most visited tourist attractions, with over 91 million annual visitors. Uite aici, asta e. Să vă arăt acum cum să, nu cum să mănâncă, să vă arăt cum să mănâncă, să vă arăt aici cel mai bun kebab din lume, zic ei, Döner. Ăsta afară, unde e coadă și e atât de bun încât lumea stă tot timpul la coadă. Să vedem dacă merită. Ok, I'm so curious. Mm. Scol! Great. Again. Mmm, delicious. We are hungry. I'm Serbia. We didn't eat anything today. So it's the best kebab ever. Yeah, it's the best kebab we ate today in Istanbul. And uh, dinner goes uh, the best with uh, this Turkish ayran. It's a uh, salty yogurt. And good. Very Alexandra is not in the mood of talking today, but this can be changed. The first coffee house was opened in Istanbul in the mid 16th century by two businessmen from Syria. Soon, a lot of coffee houses opened in Istanbul and they became places where the people were entertained and they could socialize. Even today Istanbul is famous for his coffee houses and of course for the delicious Turkish coffee. Yes. Where is your coffee? I drank um, apple, apple thing. I don't drink coffee. Look, you're in Turkey, you're supposed to drink something like that. I don't like this coffee so I prefer tea. Apple tea. Yep, it's the best. Deci mi-am luat Istanbul card 
Çiçek şampuan kart. Lütfen bekleyin. Kart yüklemeniz gerçekleşti. Okey. Pintor kapat. Pana sapon biraz. In this country, wherever there's a little spot, there are stores. Everybody's selling something. Everywhere. You can buy things all over the city. So one very smart thing that you can do in Istanbul, that it's a must do. It's a Bosphorus tour, one, two or three hours. For one hour is around three euros for a person. And it's an unforgettable experience. Of course, if it doesn't snow or rain like today. Bosphorus tour, 20 lira. Just for 20 lira, you can make this too. 20 lira, post for post for post for post for post for The golden horn behind me is a um, side golf near the Bosphorus and it was the theater of one of the most clever and naval uh, military maneuvers of the human history. So the the defensive wall of the Constantinople was not so thick in the region of the Horn, but uh, the enemy couldn't get the ships inside of this gulf because of a thick chain that was uh, at the beginning of this gulf. But what did the Ottomans do? In the night, they took all their ships on the land and they moved them around the chain with wheels. They put, uh, they put the ships back on the sea and from the ships they could attack and uh, shoot against the wall. The Galata Bridge and Galata Tower. The Galata Tower was built by the Genovese in 1348. At the time he took the city, the Sultan spared the tower and the neighborhood, allowing the small Genovese colony to exist in the new Ottoman capital. From the boat you will be able to see the Besiktas district, the Dolmabahce palace and the other unique places which are well worth a visit. Have you warmed up? Here's the start. Yes, yes, yes. Visited by almost 3 million people daily, the Istikal Boulevard becomes in the evening the center of Istanbul. If you're in Istanbul in the evening, Taksim Square is the place to be. Everybody's here on the street. Absolutely, must. It's a must. <laughs> the historic tram is the only vehicle permitted on the 1.4 km long Istikal Avenue during regular hours. The tourists love the boutiques, theaters, candy shops and the restaurants around here. As you can see, I'm protein fat. It's Kendra Kebab. Of course I'm eating kebab in the country who invented this. Uh, uh, wait a second, wait a second. Again, carbohydrates? No. No? It's healthy, it's a pumpkin. That, look at this, that's pumpkin. Pumpkin. So guys, if you're coming to eat, uh, here around Taksim Square, don't 
ever. Forget about the desert. Don't, uh, don't order desert. <laughs> don't order order. Just eat what you want to eat, and after that, go in every sweet shop. You will be treated like a king. You don't have to go. You just have to. You just look have to look and, and ask. They come. <laughs> and you, they will give you baklava and uh, lokum God. and Turkish honey and everything. So I'm so full of carbohydrates. I, don't see I need a diet. For at least two weeks. And I need a diet for at least two months. <laughs> Is it better than sleeping in a hotel? Of course, I don't want to go at home, so I will stay here all until, night long. Yes, until the plane. And you guys don't forget to like, subscribe, and to comment. We are very happy uh, to see that you are active on our channel. Why? Until next time, don't forget because every day is a holiday. Cheers. Bye. The fall of Constantinople marked the end of the European Middle Ages. It was one of the great turning points in the history of mankind.